Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of a mother of perpetual health. Redemptorists, their friends and devotees of Our Lady are happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. Let us for a moment open our minds and hearts in contemplation of this ancient picture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, whom we call our mother of perpetual health. See on this mother's face a quiet and sad expression. Having long ago given her yes to God to be the mother of God's son, she is now experiencing the cost of her yes, much as we sometimes have to count the cost in our daily lives of being followers of Jesus' teachings. She holds the child firmly in her arms, wrapped in her veil of sacred blue. She gazes out at us, a message of graceful acceptance of both joy and difficulty that comes with a life that we have chosen and which has chosen us. Her path is our path. Step by step, we struggle to become steadfast in the ways of love, hope, and faith. Let us look at the angels, Michael and Gabriel, presenting to Mary the symbols of her son's passion, death, and resurrection. They are there in this painting to remind us that no tragedy or loss in our life is ever without a redeeming grace. Sometimes this message will come to us quickly. Sometimes we may have to wait in patience until all is right and we are all one with Jesus in heaven. See the child's sandal hanging loose yet still attached. Our life here on earth is fragile and precarious. But like Jesus here, we trust that we are always held firmly the grasp of the one who loves us, even before our life began. Let us look at the star in Mary's veil, recalling the star that led the Magi, also known as the three wise men, to find Jesus, and another star that led them to safety away from Bethlehem. Mary, our mother, is our star, leading us always to Jesus and keeping us safely in his presence as we go on our way through life. And let us recall in our own time the powerful words about Mary from Vatican II. By her motherly love, she cares for her sons, sisters, and brothers who will journey on earth, surrounded by dangers and difficulties and they are led into their blessed home. Woman of mystery, woman of deep trust, answering yes, word became flesh, the one born of wisdom, the Son you call Jesus, the Son of
Popular devotion to Our Lady was not a prominent feature in the Western Church during the early Middle Ages. Certain saints, such as Augustine and Ildefonse, to name only a couple, cultivated a strong personal veneration of the Blessed Virgin. But on the whole, it was not something that had trickled down to the grassroots level. Things began to change when we reached the High Middle Ages towards the end of the 11th century. Marian devotion grows rapidly and gives rise to an immense output of literature in the form of treatises, hymns, poetry and song. Much of it in Latin, of course, for the consumption of the clergy, but also a significant amount directed to a more general public in the vernacular languages of Europe. One of the fruits of this expansion of Marian literature is a work called Los Milagros de Nuestra Señora, The Miracles of Our Lady, by Gonzalo de Berceo, a well-educated Spanish priest who lived in the region of La Rioja in northern Spain during the first half of the 13th century. The poetic and quite reverent introduction to his work gives the impression that we are going to be treated to a pious and devotional account, in verse, of a series of miracles attributed to Our Lady. What follows, however, is a collection of stories culled from various sources which, like Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, contain a great deal of ribald humour that modern readers may find hard to relate to the doctrinal content. One of them, miracle number 21 in the collection, is called La Abadesa Encinta, the pregnant abbess. The story is a bit complicated, but in essence it goes as follows. The unnamed abbess of an unspecified convent, well liked by all and sundry for her kindness and generosity and for the charitable way in which she governed her community, falls victim one day to a great temptation and becomes pregnant. As the outward signs of her pregnancy develop, an increase in weight, a change in shape and complexion, discord arises in the convent. Her detractors in the community inform the local bishop of their suspicions, and he comes to the convent to deal with the case. While he's resting from his journey, the abbess, who has always had a great devotion to the Blessed Virgin, prays fervently to Our Lady to liberate her from her distress. Our Lady, taking pity on her, appears to her in the company of two angels. Together they assist in an absolutely painless childbirth and the angels carry off the child to be cared for by a hermit. The abbess gives copious thanks to Our Lady but is then called into the presence of the bishop to explain herself. He is ready to remove her from her duties but insists on a full investigation by trustworthy priests who conduct a full physical examination of the abbess. When they find no evidence whatsoever, neither of pregnancy nor of childbirth, the bishop turns upon the detractors, threatening to expel them from the convent. At this point, the abbess takes him aside and confesses the truth. The astounded bishop restores peace to the convent and makes provision for the care and education of the infant, who in due time becomes a holy priest and is handed the reins of the diocese after the bishop dies. The episode of the abbess's succumbing to physical temptation is vividly contrasted with her eloquent and sincere plea for God's forgiveness and mercy through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin. What I think we have in this story is a pretty clear portrayal of Our Lady's role as mediatrix between mankind and God, presented in a way that will catch our attention much more vividly than an abstract theological treatise. The story reminds us that, like it or not, we are all prone to sin of one kind or another, no matter how devout we strive to be, and that none of us can claim the privilege of casting the first stone. Sin may cause us social strife or rejection in this world, but true repentance will greatly improve our lot in the next. And Our Lady, time after time after time, is there to help. Mother of Perpetual Help, 
Your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord, obtain for us the grace to be alive to our baptismal call, and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bearers of the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick. Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health and that they in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your Son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoiced as your Son forgave sins. Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins, and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your Son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the brokenhearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exalted in your Son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our life and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Justice is a right relationship with God, with all others, with ourselves, and with all of God's creation. When we are walking in an intimate relationship with God, when we have been reconciled with all the people in our lives, when we know ourselves and have accepted ourselves as we are, when we care deeply for ecology and are doing what we can to sustain the environment, then we are being just and righteous. Jim Wallace, founder of Sojourner's Community and Magazine in Washington, DC, once put together a tour entitled, Let Justice Flow Like a Mighty River. This tour was an attempt to communicate to the American public the need to pay greater attention to and change economic, political, and social structures that were unfair, especially for visible minorities, the poor, and the marginalized. That valiant effort by Wallace can be a reminder to us that justice is an integral part of the gospel and of our life as Catholic Christians. Justice is also integral to the reign of God, which is what Jesus taught about the most in the Gospels. My favorite definition of that kingdom comes from Romans 14, where St. Paul describes the kingdom of God as the peace, joy, and justice of the Holy Spirit. 
Along that same line, retreat master Father John Fullenbach teaches that justice in the Bible automatically means life-giving relationships. Social justice means life-giving relationships between groups. Jesus is all about justice as life-giving relationships. And right relationship exists ultimately in the Trinity. When the kingdom of God comes in fullness, what reigns in God will reign in the world, and then the world will come to its completion. We must distinguish between charity and a social development apostolate. Charity is caring for the victims of society. Christian concern for others or social development is geared to work for the removal of the unjust causes of victims. It's interesting that in Jewish theology, two activities embody spirituality. Devakut, which means clinging to God or contemplation, and tikkun olam, which means repair of the world or the work of justice. Clinging to God and repair of the world are two sides of the same coin. Having an integrated spirituality without either element is impossible. The mystic Saint Hildegard of Bingen understood the need for this balance. She saw the world as charged with God's glory and human beings as entrusted with special responsibility for its well-being. One of the major social justice issues in Canada that has been neglected for far too long is the need for reconciliation with the First Nations. The time is ripe for Canadians to learn about our history from the First Nations, Métis and Inuit perspective. That would help change some of the racism that is rampant in parts of our country, as pointed out by Maclean's magazine in their issue of February 2nd, 2015. And this could also serve as a follow-up to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that has just completed its mandate. Papal teachings on social justice go as far back as 1891, when Pope Leo XIII, in the wake of the Industrial Revolution, wrote the encyclical Rerum Novarum on the condition of labor. Every pope after him has written or spoken on social justice. The Bible is loaded with passages on social justice. One in particular, Psalm 85 verse 13 reads, God's saving justice blazes the trail. It is the condition of peace and happiness. And this reminds me of that bumper sticker, if you want peace, work for justice. It is my prayer that we as a church can participate more fully in that saving justice of God and blaze a trail in our country towards greater peace, happiness, and justice for all. Sing of Mary, pure and lowly, Virgin Mother undefiled. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became her
Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Canaan, Galilee. Hear our prayers, grant our petitions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, the Pope, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant married couples the grace of their sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families unity and strength and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our Mother. Grant to our single adults fulfillment in their call, to our young people success in their endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith. To our elderly, vitality, security, and contentment in their days. And to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity, who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints, where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant to each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our sisters or brothers, we do to you, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother, mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you, and God's mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs, especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools. As together we pray to God through Mary, for the great spiritual and temporal needs of all our people. Please help us if you can. Make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our websites www.redemptorists.ca or www.redemptorist.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptorists offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of a Mother of Perpetual Help for all your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card, like the one used on the TV devotions, write to us at the address on your screen. 
So pray now for God's blessing on us all each day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I met the Redemptorists, I was in a high-tech company making a multi-billionaire an extra million a year. And yet, every night I was working, trying to help the poor and the homeless in Calgary. My faith life and my work life just didn't match up. Reading the works of San Alfonsus, I was aware that he had a calling to the poor. I felt the call of God in my life. I found the Redemptorists and was invited to uh, come and see. Eventually, I found the courage to go and see.